Hi everyone, this is Lindsay O'Donnell Welch with Threat Post, and I'm here today at the RSA conference joined by Aperva Kumar. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. How's your RSA going? Uh, it's going pretty well. Um, it's uh, hugely exciting to be here for only the second time. Um, so last year I was also a speaker. Uh, it's definitely less overwhelming <laughs> um, and much more time to enjoy the atmosphere and the people. Yeah. Right. yeah, well, you guys, you're with Lookout and Lookout had a really interesting session at RSA conference this week about surveillanceware and specifically a new surveillanceware called Monocle that you had discovered. Can you talk a little bit about what that surveillanceware is and maybe just kind of walk us through how you first discovered it? Uh, sure. Uh, so uh, Monocle is a professionally developed piece of uh, Android surveillanceware. Uh, we uh, came upon it in early 2018 and um, at that time we didn't actually know its significance um, and this happens all the time really like uh, we we're looking for Android and iOS surveillanceware and we can happen across something um, and uh, with Monocle we just happened to look at it again a few months later uh, when it started increasing in activity um, and then we were able to draw a couple of uh, conclusions as to uh, who the developer might be and perhaps who it may be targeting. Um, so it turned out to be an actually a, quite an exciting story and, and, and one that was um, involved lots of late nights <laughs> and lots of fun. Um, but yeah, I'm very happy to speak about it uh, here at RSA with uh, my colleague Adam Bauer. Uh, so we're security researchers and we spent quite a bit of time looking at a family trying to track down who was using it and who was developing it um, and that's all in our talk. What are you seeing when you're first coming across surveillance where and um, how do you first kind of begin to start tracking it? Yeah, we start to look at capabilities first. So um, uh, we look for applications that um, have suspect capabilities, so things like um, whether they're accessing contacts and SMS and uh, video and photo. Uh, so sort of uh, in Android, you call them sort of dangerous permissions. And so we start there and we look deeper into the code. And um, when we come across something that uh, it, perhaps the title or the functionality of the application is not in line with the permissions that it's looking for. That is usually something that raises red flags. Um, also another technique is using Trojanized applications, which Monocle does use, and that's basically they take a legitimate application, um, unpack it, put in some or inject some malicious functionality and then repackage it and um, perhaps spread it using, I don't know, maybe some social engineering technique like phishing or something like that um, and then uh, market it to whoever or put it in front of the person who they may want to target um, and then that because it's familiar so it gets packaged as something like for example Monocle was packaged as apps like Signal or Skype so it may be a well-known application so it it becomes easier for the user to want to install it and then um, they get infected with the malware. So we usually hunt for these things using those sorts of capabilities. Right, and that's, uh, I was gonna ask too, kind of how they initially infected, um, you know, potential victims. So it sounds like they are kind of looking towards, um, you know, maybe more trusted applications as a, um, um, like a platform to be um, distributed. Is that what you're seeing? Uh, well, for Monocle specifically, uh, I have to say that we don't exactly know how, um, but looking at our experience of Trojanized applications, uh, because they mimic well-known applications, uh, it's a safe bet to say that they're trying to get a user to trust them or uh, reduce uh, suspicion from an application that's installed. And whenever somebody does that, usually some type of social engineering is involved. So uh, something like uh, they would befriend a person or they would send an uh, SMS or a uh, message through a secure messaging application saying, hey, install this application, it's safe, or I want to talk to you further. Um, get uh, Basically trying to entice the user into um, uh, letting their guard down and installing an, app, an unwanted application. Um, so that, that's one way of doing it. And uh, we do have evidence that it is possible um, that 
a certain amount of physical access of the device may have been uh, in store for um, targets of Monaco. So there may have been some physical, and the way that we draw that distinction is because there's a capability within Monaco um, uh, that allows a attacker to record a screen unlock. And so um, there's two reasons why somebody would want to do that. Uh, they'd want to know your password to unlock your phone if they had access to your phone. Um, and Or perhaps if you reuse that pin elsewhere and things like that. So that may suggest that they may have physical access to the device. We don't know yet for sure, though. Right. That's an interesting trick, too. I mean, say you reuse like your pin for your banking, um, you know, as a banking credential or something. So um, neat little trick there. So I'm curious, too, how does um, how does Monocle compare to, you know, Pegasus or some of the other spyware um, types of strains that we're seeing over the past year? Are there any kind of key differentiators that really stuck out to you? Well, it is similar in a lot of ways. Um, so all surveillance where on Android or iOS um, has a, a set set of capabilities like um, they, they know what they want to do they want to take all your data and figure out exactly who you're talking to um, that's really what surveillance is about um, so in that way they're almost always similar um, it, um, monocle did a lot of uh, things that were unique to it um, and and there is evidence that we uh, that Monocle might be using some sort of exploitation technique. So, for example, you're drawing the distinction between Monocle and Pegasus. So, Pegasus was known for using a zero day or a couple of zero days um, uh, 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 to exploit a device and then uh, gain access to it. Um, so, we haven't actually ourselves seen any exploit used, but the way that Monocle is built, it's actually, it's probably able to um, make use of those sorts of things. So it can function with root and without root. And that shows that um, the developer or the attacker may actually have access to an exploitation technique in order to use that functionality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really interesting. And um, part of your threat intel research too kind of focused in on how um, who was really behind um, you know Monocle, and uh, you had some really interesting kind of takeaways there. Um, what did you find? Uh, so we found after quite a bit of investigation and after looking at Monocle for a couple of times, uh, we, we found that uh, the developer of Monocle is almost certainly a Russian defense contractor by the name of Special Technology Center or STC. Um, and uh, this uh, developer appears to have a very good or a very advanced Android development pipeline. They are most likely producing a number of different applications. Android applications, um, both on the defensive side and the offensive side. So they produce um, uh, defensive security solutions uh, that are like basically an antivirus, um, as well as a surveillance wear, uh, which we've found uh, called Monocle. So um, uh, yeah, that, uh, I don't know. Um, I guess the STC is also um, well known or may have been heard of before because it was sanctioned uh, by the Obama administration in 2016 uh, for election interference. Uh, so that's where people may have heard the name before. So. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, that's looking at some of the other kind of groups like NSO group and some of the other ones, I feel like there is a certain air of, um, you know, trying to be legitimate, but actually, you know, in the background, like distributing some of these um, malware strains. So I wanted to ask before we wrapped up, is there any trends in surveillance where um, in 2020 that we should really be on the lookout for? Well, in, in general, um, what we've seen is that there's a um, steady increase in sophistication of these actors. Um, threats are starting to move away from simple uh, installation of applications and starting to move more onto the device and device exploitation side. Um, so definitely, as always, there will always be an increase in sophistication and complexity of these actors as they try to find new and novel ways of getting onto um, their target's device. Uh, but um, also, an interesting uh, trend that I've seen is that the use of uh, commodity commercial off-the-shelf software uh, to achieve the same purpose. So um, there are threat actors in general out there in the world that um, have relatively low or low sophisticated um, 
targets. So their targets are generally uh, um, people who may not be perhaps well educated on the technical side or understand technology all too well and um, those are the best targets for um, less sophisticated malware and and by and large what we've seen is that that's a larger market just because there are a lot more people like that and it's also easier um, to infect them and um, there's a lot more examples of that. So, um, and it's also cheaper to get. The tools are always cheaper as well. So not only are we going to see a sophistication on the higher end of the spectrum, but on the lower end, um, uh, commodity off the shelf uh, software or surveillance where things that are dubbed these days as stalkerware or spouseware are also used by threats um, uh, to achieve the same purpose. Right, and sometimes those are even um, sold as, you know, services to track your kids and um, track your employees and things like that. So that makes it even more difficult. Um, well, definitely something to look out for in 2020. So thank you so much for coming on and talking to us today at RSA. Thank you very much. Great. And have a great rest of your show. Uh, thank you. You too.